peace, a haven of peace in a troubled world. The best bit about owning a silver shadow is driving the thing. Cocooned in soft leather, admiring the polished walnut, and wafting along with such dignity, it's as though you picked up a title along the way. A Rolls-Royce still cuts more ice than Hatton Garden. Wherever you go, you bask in your own personal spotlight. But if I said that this glorious regal red shadow cost just £10,000, you'd be surprised. And you'd definitely think I was winding you up if I said the cheapest shadow now cost less than a two-year-old Sierra. But it's not a wind-up. This 72 shadow could be sitting in your garage for less than seven grand. Like scores of others, it's priced to sell because the recession has frightened buyers away. But there's nothing to be frightened of. These cars often outlive their owners, don't cost as much as you think to run, and are utterly reliable. God is in the details. We weren't impressed by the clumsy overspray on the rear window rubber and a wounded rusty quarter bumper. The once sumptuous accommodation was well past its first bloom of youth with tired leather and lifting varnish on the timber. Despite the rather sudden colour scheme, it certainly looked the part. We thought the gold lady, vinyl roof and white wall tyres a touch common and went in search of something a little more restrained. For 13,000, we found that you could buy a real Minter. It may be a similar colour and age, but this one's a completely different animal. This car hasn't just been cared for, it's been cosseted. Silken flanks dressed with sparkling chrome. This 70,000 mile car didn't have a stone chip or rust bubble in sight. No flies on this particular radiator. This is how the leather should look, just gently mellowed. The burr walnut virtually unmarked. The springy Wilton carpets unsullied by grubby shoes. And everything still worked. From the electric aerial, to the remote fuel filleries. A roller's pedigree is all. Remember that rough cars and rough people go together, which is why when you're considering a double R, our well-worn dictum of service histories is terribly important. When you're confronted with a marvellous sheaf of bills like this, don't just look at them, read them. Here we've got report on wind noise above 40 miles an hour, near side sun visor not holding position, ticking noise from speedo. Little attention to detail like this means that the bloke who owned this one was a good chap. To test if your Royce has been owned by a cad or a bounder, look in the boot. Above the battery lives the toolkit, naturally untouched by aristocratic hands. But any owner who presumes to defile his Rolls-Royce tools for repairing his lavatory is not the sort of chap we should be doing business with. When you find a fine example, you'll be surprised how disarming it is to drive. Even this 15-year-old still feels modern with supple rides, silky gearbox and whispering V8 engine. Push the old girl and she'll lift up her petticoats. Just watch it on the corners. To avoid undignified progress, you'll need a shadow too. Here's a much more swervable, agile car. Introduced in 1977, it had rack and pinion steering and revised front suspension geometry. Identifying features are these chunky front bumpers, an air dam underneath, a much more organized, user-friendly dashboard, and a thousand or so other minor modifications. At last, the old dowager handled as well as she looked. Here was a Rolls to be driven as well as desired. Shadow 2 start at around 10,000 pounds up to 17 for the very best. The Bentley version, identical apart from the badges and grille, is rarer but worth no more. And it's not sacrilege to consider second-hand parts for your roly-poly. Behind a quaint shop front in Clapham, there's a million quid's worth of used and reconditioned spares. Places like this may not fit into your idea of the Rolls-Royce experience, but anything that keeps ownership costs down has to be a good thing. Here you can buy an unbent bumper for just 350 pounds, they're 550 new. A slightly used silver lady, 175 quid, 460 new. Got a seized electric seat motor, look no further, 45 quid, 
100 quid new. Or, horror of horrors, if you're rash or unlucky enough to cook your engine, here you can buy one for 2,500 against 9,000 pounds out of Rolls-Royce. Think about it. But expensive major failures are rare, and while shadows can rust along the sills, rear wheel arches and the bottom of the front wings, it's never terminal. Mechanically, the bomb proof, really. As long as they're maintained properly, they'll run and run and run. Some of these shadows driving around today have done 400,000 miles without any major expense, mechanically. You'll buy a good shadow today for £10,000, even less than £10,000, but I'm, you'll buy a good one for £10,000. If you walked into a Ford dealership today and bought a top-of-the-range Granada, sat in it and drove it out the showroom, you'll lose £10,000. So in that respect, you know, really, you've got your rolls for nothing. Instead of paying main agent prices, you can save the cost of a Caribbean holiday by using a rolls train non-franchise specialist. The owner of this Corniche has been doing exactly that for 20 years. It will cost me uh, 150 to 200, depending on how major a service it is. Obviously, if you've got a lot of parts to be replaced, then you can go up to four or 500 pounds, but that's uncommon. We have a BMW, it's only one of the little ones, the uh, 3 Series, uh, but certainly it's much cheaper having the road service than uh, to have the BMW done by the BMW dealers. So a choice Royce probably offers the best value for money of any second-hand car, along with a pleasing certainty that you'll feel better at the end of your journey than when you started. As for practicality, with all that boot space, they're ideal for carting about the family heirlooms. Genuine Rosetti, signed and dated. Come on now, look what I'm doing. Not 1,000, not 500, not 400, not 300. 